the door. Is this okay? Yeah. Okay. I think you remember what I said five minutes ago, so I won't restart from, from scratch. And uh, I was a member of the Virtumap development team in a glorious day of uh, version one when uh, towards the end everyone else was working on the version two because it was much more fun and I was trying to keep the one together with some horrible bug fixes and well, we know that's the story. I've been Okay, part of the, that project also. I don't know if you know it, it's a little extension that draws a um, sitemap, XML sitemap of your Joomla site. Uh, only problem is Patrick, which is main developer, is not really into Joomla anymore, so that project didn't, well, it's not very active right now. Sorry, Eric. Okay. And, uh, sorry. I am now part of the Watchful Eye or watchfully or watchful or how do you want to call it, uh, development team. And uh, this project has just uh, won um, an award, the best Joomla app of the year at the CMS Expo. So congratulations to Keandre and uh, Victor who are developing this stuff. So this was just to introduce why, who I am. Okay, why are we here? <coughs> I went to non Joomla conferences last year so I had the opportunity to see how other people are doing stuff, uh, other framework, other, other ideas. And I have to admit that, okay, okay. <laughs> I have to admit that um, I think we can improve the overall quality of our work. And I'm talking about the Joomla framework. I'm, I'm talking about the application and the extensions developed for Joomla. So, uh, while I was toying with, with this idea, I saw this um, tweet from Yannick, which is here somewhere. And uh, well, some, some, somehow it convinced me that it was uh, the right moment to step up and say, okay, people, we need to define some good practices and try really to improve our work and the quality of our code. This is what we are here today to try to understand. This is not a development course. If you haven't ever, haven't ever tried, at least tried to write a component or a module or whatever, an extension, you may probably find some unfamiliar concept. Don't leave the room, you can ask questions, but this is more targeted to people who had the opportunity to write some extension and is trying to improve uh, the way these extensions are written. And uh, what is uh, exactly our target? I refer to good for the purpose of this speech as not bad, and that's not really uh, you know, a novelty, but what I mean is the right way as opposed to the wrong way. While excellent is another matter. Excellent, you have to uh, be above the average, you have to do great stuff, and I think good is enough for today. So let's try to avoid basic errors and basic, what I think, uh, bad practices while developing Joomla extensions. Why me? <coughs> okay, because no one else did. But that's basically the answer to why I'm here. I'm, I do not consider myself an excellent developer. You have to have the time, you have to have the skill to be an excellent developer. You don't not anyone can be an excellent developer. But I think, I really think that everyone can be a good developer and write good code in the sense that we can respect standards, we can uh, follow partners, and we can uh, cooperate better with other people. So, where do we start with? I think from 
the very basic starting point is, is, the, is your environment, is your development environment, your work area. So I will start with the uh, ID. I think most of you uh, use it. I hope you're using an ID like an integrated development environment, which at the very, very, very least support something like multiple files edit. I think that except from Notepad on Windows, every, everything does that now. Uh, th align your syntaxes so you can quickly spot error and typos. That has an index for your methods and variables so you can browse through your files in, in, a, in a quick way. There's autocomplete your brackets and parentheses and quotes and single quotes and whatever. And there is a compiler so you can quickly sh mm, notice if there is something wrong, not, not from a syntax point of view, but from a logical point of view. The first five points are just a basic subset. I mean, less than this, and you're not using a, a serious program, in my opinion. You should really consider what else to do. That does not mean that you can, you can have more than that. In fact, I suggest you, I hope you can have more than that, like integration with a versioning system, which we, we will talk about in a minute, uh, like a GitHub, like, like Git, like S1, whatever. Unit testing integration, something that lets you really quickly write testing. A lot of people are talking about testing in, in these days, and there's a reason for that, and I agree with that reason. Uh, documento, so you can quickly create documentation in a, in a standard format from your comments, and many other things. So the idea is that you start this program and do whatever you need from FTP, from whatever, without just skipping around with different tools. <coughs> we use NetBeans. A lot of people here is a, a lot here, a lot of people that I know <laughs> is using PHP Storm and swear by it. I, I'm not endorsing anything. I just suggest you to use a serious tool because it can make a world of difference in, in the way you, you really, uh, in, in the speed of uh, writing code. So whatever you like best. What is versioning? If you don't know what versioning is, stop <laughs> writing extensions, see what versioning is, and then come back using versioning. Uh, just to know how quickly I can skip over this. Who is using it here? Okay, uh, something that is not Git, but does the same thing, like s or Mercurial. Okay, we still have some holes left, so to anyone who is not using it, I greatly suggest to take the time to learn what it is. In a few words, a versioning system is something that tracks all your changes and lets you quickly uh, get back to previous versions and you can develop different versions in, a, in the same time. You can have a lot of um, improvements and most of all, you can reduce the number of, uh, of um, problems in your code because you have a clear record of what you did and when, or who did when. Uh, oh, a lot of people is using Git. I mentioned as when Mercurial and other things. By um, in my experience, we came from subversion. In my experience, Git is very, very well su suited to develop uh, Joomla extensions. That kind of development because. You know, it's really easy to branch and to uh, have different versions at the same time, which is mostly the case when you release commercial extensions, not even free extensions. So I really suggest to go with Git. There is a book on the, on the uh, about that, it's a free book. Well, it's even more th 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 than needed. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on that, but at least the basic stuff is there. So read the, uh, at least the, the stuff you need to. And if you use Git, uh, you should know GitHub, which is uh, an hosted Git and uh, is uh, used by a, a, a many lot of, of projects, especially from Joomla and other famous Joomla extensions. It's a way to, to share, to cooperate, uh, and basically even just a backup of your file. You don't need a Git server. You can just use Git on your own uh, computer if you want. But if you use uh, um, GitHub, it's uh, even better. Okay, you're not alone. What I mean is, when you, when you write code, and we now will approach, we gradually go into the, the code part of the, of the talk, um, you are not alone because many other people can read your code just to, I don't know, change something. 
or integrate something and maybe send it back to you or just to know how good you are, how good you are uh, at coding. So uh, if you follow some standards and make their life better, you are making friends and uh, they will be grateful and the most grateful people will be yourself two years from now. When you look back at the code you've written, you, if you have written a, a good code, you will congratulate yourself and if you have not, you will as well at yourself for, for writing such bad code. And of course, <coughs> the, the one of the most neglected best practice, in my opinion, is learning. You should, I don't know, whatever fits you best. Read books, read posts, uh, watch videos, attend conferences. As I said, I've learned many things about attending, from attending uh, conferences outside the Joomla world. You can share ideas, and I suggest you really to take the time to always learn that is my, in my opinion, the, the, the one thing that will improve your work, everything, in its right place. Okay, this was the introduction. Uh, let's try to focus on, on the code and extension. Let's start with saying where everything should be put in a custom, <coughs> oh sorry, in, a s in any uh, Joomla component. I will not write code today, I don't like when you have these poses while people is writing code. So you will see some sample code, but we'll talk about, you know, higher level of things. Okay, you know, there's a back end and a front end in the major part of the components. So this is the basic structure of a Joomla component. And I think that unless you are not using MVC, which should never happen. Uh, this is, uh, you, you don't have much choice about it. You should really uh, use this basic structure. You have the components, folder, you have a component name, yeah, like, okay, an entry point, and the folder, controllers, models, and views. Uh, okay, this is a very basic structure, as I said, and you don't have much choice about it if you want to use MVC. And as we can see in a minute, uh, MVC is really important to use. Then we will try to discover even why this is so important to use. Um, I would, for those of you who, who have maybe a, a more experienced eye, you can notice there is no controller PHP in the root folder. We like not to use a general controller. We will have just specific controllers inside the controllers um, folder. If you have not clear what a controller is, a model is, and a view is, and a what a view is, we will see that in a minute. A few additional folders that you can add in your backend, so we can also see what 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 they are, what they are about. Tables are for table classes. Table classes we will see later are like the interface to 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 to, to the database. The the way to uh, relate directly to, to the table. So you can, you don't have to write all your SQL queries in your model. The SQL folder is about the installation and uninstallation SQL script. And also, and this is one thing that you should not forget, for upgrade dates, you have SQL schemas, which is a way to tell Joomla that your SQL schema has changed during the version. So you can, uh, let's say, the version two of your components uh, as a certain SQL schema, then the version 2.1, you should never do that, but okay, let's say that the 2.1 two um, introduces changes in the schema, you can do an SQL file, which is just the change, and Joomla will automatically update the SQL structure for you and help us, which is the correct place for any kind of uh, common functions you are using throughout your components. So, why in the front end? We will have, of course, a similar structure, which is the entry point, which is the main file, the controllers, the models, and the views table. 
Usually we don't put anything else here uh, because the tables, the uh, helpers and whatever are usually in the backend and because the media files, I prefer to put them somewhere else. Like if you have icons, if you have images, if you have backgrounds in your components, you should really consider putting them in the media folder in a subfolder name with your component with the, the sub substructure CSS, JS and EMG, which is quite standard way to, to distribute and name your folders. Again, if you use standards, we can cooperate better. And if you have user images, I mean, let's say your company deal with uploading logos, images or whatever, so the final user will upload images into your component, I suggest to create a subfolder into the ima images folder with, the, again, the name of your component to differentiate these images from the others. Okay, now uh, do everyone until here agree with what I've said? I think that, uh, in my opinion, is that uh, if you have everything in t into the media folder, you can easily uh, determine what's static. So you can use CDN and other providers to provide images. So you can have the whole media folders like, okay, these are all my static files or my static resources. I don't need to do uh, to have them, you know, into into that. And also because you may, I don't know, uh, decide that you want to index them or not. So you, you uh, I really think that pays a lot when you have many uh, components to have all these kind of files in some place and all the other kinds of files in some other place. It's like the um, Unix philosophy when you have a folder for d different meanings and for different files. So whenever you install something, it's not just a big folder with everything, but you just put your places, your, your, your pieces where, where it's need needed to. Okay, <coughs> um, what I mean by this slide, you should try to not to focus on the CSS and JS in your file and if you do, if you do need CSS and JS in your component, uh, just try to have them out, out of the main logic of the, of the component. So let's start by considering that there are many good libraries, li libraries about CSS and, uh, and JS in Joomla. Uh, let's review them quickly. You have MooTools since uh, Joomla 1.5. I like very much MooTools. I'm quite sad that it's gradually growing into disliking. And uh, jQuery, which a lot of people is using today and uh, which is uh, part of the core Joomla since 2.5. You have Bootstrap since Joomla 3, which is based on jQuery anyway, so if you use Bootstrap, you have to use jQuery anyway. What do these libraries bring to you? They offer you a lot of CSS styles and a lot of, a lot of JavaScript effects without need to write almost any code. Like, okay, you have to write a little bit of HTML code because you have to write some classes, but with the, with the right class, you can do a lot of things without ever need to write a, a single line of CSS of or a single line of JavaScript. So if you use this, you will have less file to take care of. You will not have to worry about um, managing those files. You have a slighter component. So I suggest to, do, to use that whenever it's possible. If you really have to do your own styles and, uh, and JavaScript, really try to avoid inline style. I mean, even for very simple styles like this, you are putting, you know, uh, you are nailing something into, into, into the code and uh, everyone else who is using this component will at some time swear at you. Because uh, you can, uh, if, you do don't, if you don't do this, your component will adapt to any kind of, uh, you know, Joomla template almost easily. While if you try, if you begin to insert blocker like declare or fixed eight and width, well, you're, you're really becoming a more uh, rigid component and that is not good in my opinion. So try to avoid fixed styles into the, into, the, into the code. 
and also if you have some styles put in, in external CSS files. So don't use them whenever you can, and if you have to use them, put them in a external CSS files. Same thing for JavaScript. Try not to put uh, on click and on whatever events into the code. If you can, you can just do it at runtime. You just identify your element and you apply to it some event, which is, I don't know, submit, click, load. If for who is not familiar with, with the mood tools syntax, the final block says, okay, whenever the document has been loaded, add an event to the element with ID submit, that's so that's when it's clicked, something started. All of this can be applied anything, um, can be applied anywhere without the need to modify your code. So it's very useful even to change some behavior in other people's components. So try to avoid using inline JavaScript as well as inline CSS files, styles, sorry. Okay, do not reinvent wheel. What does it mean? The best practice here, th this is the best practice to avoid loading your own library. That is what I, that's what I mean when I say use what's there. Uh, the Joomla uh, CMS provides uh, libraries um, in different versions and um, you can possibly avoid to load other libraries, especially for this reason, because some company will load its own, its own library and possibly a certain version of that library that could go conflict, conflict that could conflict with other other libraries that are already there. So the, the my suggestion in this case is try really try to avoid loading your own libraries. If you do have, take care of the loading order because you know that many conflicts are about how early or how late uh, many conflicts or errors are generated by the order in which the several libraries are loaded into the page. So you can avoid loading some library at all. <laughs> well, how can you do that? Hmm. I don't think that. Mm. I can suggest you, uh, you know, a one way to do that. Uh, you can avoid mm, any kind of conflicts. You, if you don't load an additional library, you're probably fine. So, where was I? About the Joomla framework. We heard a speech today about this, which is, uh, well, I put some random classes here, the, the most used, I think. And uh, the point here is uh, really try to use what's there. If you take a look at documentation for Joomla, for the app, you can see that there are a lot of uh, classes and utilities for doing a lot of things. And so, uh, as far as you can, as long as you can, try not to, uh, write something that is already there. I think most of you are familiar with these classes like the J database to, of course, access and use the database, the J user to load and get access data from user and so on. J, do J document, you can inject styles in JavaScript into the document amongst other things. The J HTML class to produce common HTML elements. I'm not going into any one of them because there's exten extensive documentation. I just add some, the G version is very useful to intercept the Joomla version so you can you know, have a little difference in your code uh, related to the version of Joomla you're using. Um, by using the framework, you will reduce the, the code that you're writing. So even if the framework will change, and we have seen that it changes sometimes, um, you have written, you have less code to change. Like it can really be easier to change. Also, try to try to, to fix this, there are some intermediate layer. Uh, we heard today talking about uh, rapid application development, which uh, 
is a kind of uh, layer between the, the underlying um, framework and uh, your components. So you can think about that. There is a session after this at the four o'clock about uh, framework on framework, which is I think one of the most known uh, rep rapid application development uh, frameworks right now. So, um, it's possible that it, it can be it can become a standard. So I really suggest you take a look in into FOS. And do not forget that Joomla is built on PHP. We, I think there was a, another speech about PHP today. And uh, there are a lot of useful classes and methods in PHP also that you don't have to forget about. If you can't find what you need in, into, into, into the Joomla framework, into the Joomla library, you can always try to use some PHP ready-made library and methods. So like, for example, the regular expressions, like the trim, the u sort, the array map. I think there are functions in my personal experience that uh, if you don't know that they're there, you may end up writing a lot of code that you really don't need to. The date time, which of course you can use even in, in the JDate time object of, of Joomla framework. And the standard PHP library, which is a set of uh, common libraries and functions in PHP that you can use to do most of the things. So. If you really use the Joomla frameworks and the PHP available classes and methods, you will, again, reduce a lot the amount of code you're writing, and that makes for a easier life for you. Oh, since we're talking about PHP, someone will love me for sharing with you this. It's like four years that PHP 5.3 has been released, so I don't know if you have already passed me rated to 5.3. Do that because it's, it's quite a lot that it's around. Also because 5.2 is like three years end of life. So end of life means not development anymore. So it's really bad idea to stick with 5.2 if you're doing that. Don't do that. And one year ago, 5.4 was out. So it's not like yesterday, it's already one year. So I think that could be interesting to take a look at it, maybe for some servers or for, so for some local development. Also be because of this reason, if you do benchmarks, you can see that the processing part of PHP can reveal you that uh, 5.4 is 40% faster than PHP 5.2. So I think that's that, that is a good reason. Of course, the speed of your site is not just about PHP processing. You have to use cache, you have to use possibly CDN, you have to, well, code, uh, you create a, uh, a good code, but that's a significant difference. Oh, okay, now my favorite part. What is MVC? We have a lot of tutorials about writing an MVC components for Joomla. But in my opinion, most of them don't really focus on what MVC is and why it's made that way. So we try to clear the air a bit. MVC is a design pattern, so a way to write your component, which is uh, object-oriented programming. As you may uh, guess, uh, object-oriented development or programming is about objects. And I think that if you have to write a component about books, these are the objects that you will refer to, like a book, a library, a writer. So these will be the model, view, and controller you will have. A book model, a book view, a book controller, a writer model, a writer view, a writer controller, and so on. This is an example of what I think is a good design. Because an object is an object is a, is a thing. It's definitely not an action. So we don't need to confuse views with actions. Let's do an example of what I don't consider an example of good design. 
search is not an object. So you won't have a view called a view called search. You shouldn't have that. Also, we throw away the dif distinction between singular and plural because, in my opinion, an object is still an object if I have s even if I have several of them. Edit book, books out, or top ten. This is not what I consider a good design. You have to define very clearly the objects in your application, in your component. And I think that's quite easy because you know what you're talking about. You really consider what, they are, what are the objects, the entities in your application. And after you have defined that, you just make them do something. So you attach tasks to them. You attach uh, methods to them. That could also help you reach hi a higher level of quality in your component. Now, if we agree that we are building a component where the MVC triad or ensemble uh, is uh, one for each object, because of course, if you have an object called book, as I said before, you have a controller, book, a book model, and a book view. Let's see quickly what each of these uh, elements will do in your application. The controller is almost is my opinion the, the most underrated element of the three because it's often think uh, as a 10 lines of code just to call the view. No, the controller is one of the most important part or should become one of the most important part of your component because it can filter the input, it can decide what to do based on the input, on the URL and whatever. It can of course check the access to whatever action has been called of course, execute the tasks and then finally pass the control to the views. You should do a lot of things in your controller because it's uh, still early in the processing, so you can you don't have to pass a lot of things and a lot of information around. And then only after then you would proceed on with other tasks. The model is uh, a single-minded character. Only, it only loves to be related to data. So as you can see, retrieves data, validates data, gets data. I see, I think you can see the pattern. What I, just, just a, uh, uh, a point that I would like to make it clear, the actual validation could be and should be in the model because the model knows how the data are structured. So only the model can say uh, which is a valid value for any kind of data. But possibly it's the controller who does the, the, the two tasks. So I'm the controller, I co ask the model to validate my data, and I get back the control. Okay, my data is validated. So I call the model again to store the data. I try not to have the model call itself too many times. Is it quite clear here? Any question? Okay, and uh, the model hates to be mistaken as an helper. So what I mean is, this should be the time for questions, but we are a bit late. <laughs> I will try to be quick, so we start late and we re recover. If I am a model, I have to do with data, with books data, with uh, writer's data, with library's data. Getting the time of the day is not a, a task for a model. Or any kind of common method which is not related to that specific object should not belong to the model. And the view, the view, the single view I have for the book object is getting the, the data from the model and displays the object or the object list or the object top 10 or the object blog or whatever. I mean, you have layouts for that. You have this nice subfolder which is called TMPL in, 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 each of your, in each one of your view. We will see that later. Possibly not because of the time, but okay. What I mean is uh, you should have a single view, a single logic, a single display logic, which then gets represented in a different way 
based on the page you're on. You can have a read layout, you can have an edit layout, you can have a, a list layout, and so on. Do not split your views for this reason. The layout is another stuff, is another matter. So have a single view for a single object and then several views for that. Uh, quickly sample code. Mm, I'll try to be very uh, quick about this because we won't get very, we don't have much time. Uh, this is a sample code, so just sample. Uh, it's not the, the perfect way to write anything. Just wanted to mm, make sure you're using some kind of PHP doc. Like it's again, this is a standard way of writing your uh, some information about the, about the file. If you ever heard of PHP doc, who, who, who ever heard of PHP doc or Java doc? Okay, okay. Basically, it's a way of using some keyword with, the, uh, with that character. And uh, so after, you can use this for a file header, function header, class headers, and it could be parsed and build automatically your documentation. So try to have a look at PHP doc if you can. The entry point is really usually very simple. This is my, my component name, uh, .php file in the root folder of my component. It just, you know, gets, invokes the controller class, gets the view and the task, and execute it. That's all. I don't do any other stuff here, usually. Okay, uh, you can have a more complex co uh, component that, do, that does other stuff, but usually it's very quick here. Okay, this is going to be long. Uh, the controller, I gradually will remove all comments from this code because it will get to twice. So uh, you can see that I have a book controller. The my books is the name of the component. I declare a variable. We will see later that you should not use var anymore. Like don't use var view because it's been deprecated since 5.1, since PHP 5.1, you should do it public or private or protected because that is a, a way to define how is visible any kind of property or method in your application. Uh, as an example, this is still the controller. It's we're just getting uh, further during in the file. I have a, a, a main model, which is uh, the my, my books model book. I set the view and I assign several models to the view to avoid code duplication. I mean, if in the, in the page dedicated to the book, I can, I may need some information about the author, the author or the, or the, or the, or the, or the library. So what I, what I have to do is uh, I assign several models to the view so the view can get data from the books uh, get data about the books, data about the writer, data about the library, and so on. And uh, this way I don't have like a get authors method in my, in my books model. And so on. We, as you may see, we can, we set the layout of the view. Uh, I, we are still in the controller and we set the layout. So uh, the index and create, so for example, that can be edit, read, list, whatever. The save, as you can see, I first validate the data and then call the creation method. I said that before. The controller should do the actions. The model is the implementation, like the real validation of storage. Okay, um, <laughs> it's not. When I construct the model, I try to set the filters at the start, like, um, limit, limit start, and authority, any kind of filter. So uh, I have them throughout the code without the need to call them G request or any other kind of uh, input again. There's a few other methods. Okay, I will publish the slides so you can, yeah. No, it's good. It's okay. Oh, sorry, I, oh, sorry, this, is the model. this is the model. Yes. Yeah, we okay. We okay. Th the model is okay. You, it, it's it's fine to put these okay. things in the model. Okay. We have several methods from the model. 
and just in case it isn't clear enough, the border should be the only place in your component that has SQL queries. You can also build models without SQL queries. You can use table classes, but <coughs> if you have SQL in your component, it should be in the model and nowhere else. Not in the controller, not in the views, not in the layout at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is definitely yeah. Um, I picked some code there, <laughs> um, which can 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 also be improved. What what he said is, okay, there is no need to write SQL. We can use the J database object, J database query object, so we can build the query in a much more uh, explicative way and safer way. So yes, that is true. My next version of the slide will, will include this. You are aware of the. I, uh, is anyone not aware that you can use J database query? object to build queries. Did you understand my question? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay, um, I'm, I'm much more happy now. Okay. Okay, the create and so on. I will skip over this to get to the important part. The view, okay. We are in the views, so if I have to have some information, we are in the book view. So I, I have a page about a book, but of course, when I have a page about a book, I can have a page about uh, um, some info about an author, writer. So what I do is I get the list of authors, I get the li list of editors. I call several models to get the data I need. I don't, again, the book model is only concerned with the books, the author model is only concerned with the, uh, the authors. I shouldn't have models that do query on different tables. Why should we need all this? Basically because this will make for less code and less code is better to maintain, just as a parenthesis. Um, in my view, I can have several methods because I can have several layouts. So I will build the data differently uh, according to, I don't know, there's a list, uh, there's a, a single item, a single item read, a single item edit, and so on. Even for the toolbar, I can create several toolbars, several buttons in the head of the, my page according to the layout where I'm in. I think you can possibly look uh, at the code later in the slides, so I'm, uh, gladly accepting suggestions about what is this. I said before, I am not here because I'm the best developer, absolutely. I'm not an excellent developer, there are, especially here at the JMB on there are excellent developers. I just try to put together some common universal practices that I feel that, that are good. I didn't invent them, so you have not to trust me. You have to trust that this is something that a lot of people are using. Okay, other user files in your component. Uh, the helpers is uh, what I said before. You don't put in the model functions that are common and functions that are universal, like get date time info, format dating, formatting values, date numbers, or build titles or whatever, or getting, I don't know, the, the location you're in. Like I'm querying Google map to say, tell me where I am. These, are these, are these uh, methods are not pertaining to a single model, so you should try to put them in helpers, which we have a folder for. And the table class is an implementation of the active record pattern, if you want to know, and uh, which is uh, a way to talk directly to the table. Like I can load, store, delete any kind of record without the need to write the SQL command for it, even with or without uh, the JDBase query. So table classes should be another topic of your common daily use. Uh, very, very, very simple example of table class, if you haven't used it, is you put this kind of file in your tables folder. Is it named after the, the table, like in this case would be books, sorry, book, table book, book.php. And uh, um, it defines a field in your table and you define the, cons the, the table and the identifier for your table. You can have more complex methods uh, coming. You can have more complex methods here like uh, a validation before storing or something that, uh, I don't know, adds the date of the insert of the modification automatically at every store operation. But this is a very basic example. Yes? The declaration, 
sorry? The declaration of the fields is no longer needed in between your two transcribing layers. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, okay. You can write less code. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> so, um, the layout we talked about before is uh, all the files that are in the TMPL subfolder of uh, any view, which is, uh, as I said, no one said that it should be called default. No one said it should be called default underscore item, default underscore form, or whatever. So we try to always call them in the most meaningful way for us, like edit.php, like read.php, and so on. So also because uh, it's easier for anyone to write a template override, if you use several layouts, you can make life easier for user. How much time, time we got yet? How much time we got? Um, in 10 minutes, the next session is in 15. Okay, and that is a coffee break right now, yeah? No, now is a coffee break. If you don't want to have a coffee break, you can... You I want to have a coffee break. Five minutes. Okay, let's keep over this. Ten minutes is too late. Okay, I said about something about this. Well. I think we can skip the question, directly to the question part or just to the coffee break. Yes? Um, one thing I've learned um, tonight. Next time we we'll start uh, in time, so maybe we well make more sense. I think it's a good thing for other people to learn as well. Is, I think it's important that we use distinct name phrases for JavaScript functions and CSS functions and IDs. Because basically, you avoid clashes with other drawing plugins. Like yeah, of course. If you. Let's say the same thing for language files. I think it's a, yes, a good idea to, um, the, the question is, uh, shall we use uh, separate namespaces? Not in the PHP sense of the word. If you create your own custom classes or JavaScript functions or whatever, uh, try to identify them with the name of your component before so it will not clash with any other kind of uh, CSS classes or JavaScript functions. So yes, I agree with that. And Okay, constants, we don't have time for this. The word goes on, okay. Well, this presentation could use some improvement, but thank you for your attention, and <laughs> now have a good coffee break. Sorry? Testing? <laughs> yeah, sorry? It was a, a test, a testing for you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.